After 13 years of waiting, Avatar The Way of Water is finally here. And there's more good news too. Avatar 3 will be sooner here than you think. The epic adventure has only just begun, but Avatar The Way of Water has already made a big splash at the box office. The Way of Water is the sequel to James Cameron's 2009 film Avatar, which he also wrote and directed. Many people were curious in seeing how the film's caliber would change after such a long break since it was released 13 years after its predecessor. Nearly two decades have passed since the first movie's events and Jake Sully and Neytiri are doing well. Jake is fully integrated into Not V Life and the couple has welcomed four children over the years. Their eldest son, Netiam, their second oldest son, Loak, adopted daughter, Kiri, and their youngest daughter, Tuke, as well as Miles, better known as Spider, a human boy who was left behind on Pandora and grew up alongside Jake and Netiri's family. Jake and Netiri's joy, however, is ended as they encounter yet another threat, this time in the form of Colonel Miles Quaritch's avatar, which is loaded with the memories of his clone. Quaritch is relentless in his pursuit of Jake's family because he wants revenge on them, which forces Jake and Nitiri to seek shelter with the Metkaina, a water tribe. In contrast to Avatar, the way of water ends with a conflict between Quaritch and Jake Sully on a personal level. What we saw in Avatar was the culmination of years of colonization. In the way of water, we see the beginnings of the latest insurgency. It makes sense then that James Cameron and his team have concentrated on forging a major rivalry and giving us a sense of what it will take to defeat the opponent. In addition, Kiri's father's mystery will likely be revealed in the follow-up films as he must be a very strong spiritual figure. As far as I'm aware, Dr. Augustine never demonstrated the ability to control Pandora's environment. As a result, Kiri's abilities must have come from her father. It'll be interesting to see how the dynamic between Neytiri, Spider, and Quaritch plays out. While there's a lot of excitement surrounding the sequel, Cameron has long had his sights set on not just Avatar 2, but multiple sequels in the future, including Avatar 3, 4, and 5, if not 6 and 7. Here's what we currently know about the upcoming film Avatar 3, which is not just a planned future project, but also already finished filming with a confirmed cast and release date. Avatar 3 has been confirmed for several years, and the gap between the first film and its sequels is long enough for James Cameron and his writing team to plan out the story ahead of time. Cameron's plans for Avatar 3 are more established because the sequel was shot parallelly with Avatar The Way of Water and motion capture performances for Avatar 3 and some of Avatar 4 were finished back in 2018. Avatar 3 is also expected to explore previously unexplored regions of Pandora and introduce new Na'vi clans. Before we go any further, we wanted to let you know that it's time for you to smash that like button if you haven't done it already. Long story short, Avatar 3 is scheduled to hit theaters on December 20th, 2024. The movie experienced multiple delays and its release date was postponed multiple times for a variety of reasons, including production halts brought on by COVID-19. In particular, James Cameron wanted to have all five scripts ready before beginning production on the Avatar sequel, which contributed to the delays. The visual effects crew benefited from the delays as well as because they had more time to work on the sequels. Avatar 3's release date was initially set for 2015 and later changed to 2020. 20th Century Studios ultimately decided on 2024, which is two years after the debut of its predecessor. Given that Avatar 3 was shot parallelly with the sequel, we already have some confirmed returns for the next film, including Sam Worthington as Jake Sully and Zoe Saldana as Nitiri. The third film will not feature the entire Sully family because Jamie Flatter's character, Netiam, who was introduced to us in the sequel, was shot and killed in the way of water's dramatic climax. The Sully family's interactions with the spirit tree may result in flashbacks or even the appearance of Netiam, but he's undoubtedly dead. The remaining Sully members all made it out alive, so we'll see Britton Dalton as their second son, Loak, Trinity Jolie Bliss as their youngest child, Tuktiri, and their adopted daughter, Kiri, played by Sigourney Weaver, who's the biological daughter of Dr. Grace Augustine's avatar. As Miles Spider Socorro, a human born on Pandora, who is proved to be Quaritch's son, Jack Champion will also be back. At the end of the sequel, he saved his father's life, but he decided to return to the Sullys. Speaking of Spider's father, Stephen Lang will return as Colonel Miles Quaritch, a not V avatar who has been embedded with Quaritch's memories. Since Jake has once again defeated him, he has even more reason for revenge. Tonawari, the leader of the Metkaina, and Ronal, his wife, will be played by Cliff Curtis and Kate Winslet, respectively, while Tseria, their daughter, will be played by Bailey Bass. Also, David Thewlis will play a secret character alongside Michelle Yeoh as Dr. Karina Moog, Una Chaplin as Varang, and possibly Vin Diesel as an unidentified character. 
Although Avatar The Way of Water is largely self-contained, it does store some hints about the plot of Avatar 3. The Sully family may have lost a member by the film's ending, but they're now a part of the Metkayina family. Jake's final voiceover makes it clear that he's preparing to take a significant stand against the RDA to defend his family. He says, This is our fortress, this is where we make our stand, which, unless Cameron is playing a practical joke on us, suggests that the third film might feature an all-out battle between the Na'vi and the RDA. While Kiri was raised knowing her biological mother was Dr. Grace Augustine, she was adopted by Jake and Natiri. Kiri's father is one of the mysteries to be revealed in the third film. The identity of Kiri's biological father is unknown. Even when Kiri made contact with Ewa, Grace refused to reveal his identity. This secrecy surrounding Kiri's biological father suggests he's someone the audience is already familiar with, perhaps a character from the first Avatar or someone who hasn't yet been introduced. Considering how mysterious the future of Avatar is, finding out who Kiri's biological father is will be important. Why does Kiri's connection with Pandora function differently as well? The fact that Kiri can connect to Pandora in a way that is entirely special to her may have something to do with the identity of her biological father. The other Na'vi are amazed by Kiri's connection because it enables her to command the local wildlife to attack any humans attempting to harm her and her family. Kiri can also feel Ewa in her body, implying that she's more in tune with the planet's beating heart than anyone else. It's strange, but Kiri's intense connection may be influenced by her mysterious birth situation, even though it could directly have something to do with Ewa. I know you think I'm crazy, but I feel her. The antagonist of the movie is probably going to continue his quest for vengeance against Jake in Avatar 3 now that Spider has saved Colonel Quaritch from drowning. When the Way of Water's final battle wraps up, Quaritch's rage will be at an all-time high, so things might get worse before they get even better. Furthermore, if his surrogate family learns what Spider did, it might cause friction between them and him. While Quaritch's main argument is with Jake, the RDA wants to expand Pandora and make it more human-friendly. The Na'vi, who have always fought to defend their people and homeland, will likely become even more divided and hostile as a result of their colonization, which will destroy the native population and their land. And because of this, you need to smash that subscribe button and notification bell so you'll never miss any of our videos in the future. So now that we've seen the ocean in the second movie and the jungles of Pandora in the first, where the third one will take us is anyone's guess. Does Pandora have deserts? Do they have mountains covered in snow? All we can do is wait and see. See you in the next video.